Okay, I had to stop there in the middle because I had a phone call interrupting, so let's keep going. So now we just keep repeating the same thing. We have congruent triangles. We're going to find their congruent parts as a result. So here I have vertical angles, and I always double check because this is angle, angle, side, that my angles are opposite the side, so everything corresponds, everything matchy matches well. So I'm going to go with this one. I got by angle, angle, side, congruence, triangle. Let's go J, K, H is congruent to triangle. If I go J, K, H, I'm going to have to go L, K, M. So, what do we know about these two segments right here, JK and KL? Hmm, they're congruent. So, segment JK is congruent to segment KL by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, let's do the last one here. <sighs> reflexive property, anyone? Mm -hmm. Reflexive property. So, we have side, side, side. Now, one thing I told you guys is you have to know what CPCT stands for, but what's just as important, why are these two triangles congruent? So, we'll just say it right over here. By the side, side, side congruence, triangle R and P is congruent to triangle. If I go R and P, it's going to be P, Q, R. So, what do we know? Angle N is now congruent to angle Q by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, now let's go ahead and do the proofs together on the other side. So let's make sure we are understanding this. When do I use CPCTC? Notice it was after I showed the triangles congruent by another reason. So we have to do it in that way. So let's remember. On this, and I even put this in there, it says prove the following. Remember, CPCTC can only be used after two triangles have been proven congruent. Now, on your homework, I do believe we have a couple problems. And with those couple problems, we want to make sure that you write them as two column proofs. Don't write them any other way. And I think I even said which ones those were. I think it's 14 and 15 on the homework assignment. So make sure that we have these. Now, look here on the following. I always want to mark up the given, and I have to put it in the proof. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So here's our first given. So with the first one, I have segment BD is perpendicular to segment AB. That's given. Now, what do perpendicular lines give us? They give us right angles. So that's what you have to tell me first. So here's the right angle. They already have it marked. So angle B is a right angle. And that's just the definition of perpendicular lines. Now, let's go back to our given again. We get the fact that segment BD is perpendicular to segment D. It's also given. Oh look, a right angle. So guess what I have to mark in my proof? That's a right angle. So angle D is a right angle. And the same reason as before. We know it's because the definition of perpendicular lines. So now what do we know about those two right angles? Remember I gotta show pairs of congruent things. Well, I know they're congruent to each other. Now, what theorem tells us that? All right angles are congruent. So we have those. And then once we're done, where do we go again? Yeah, we go back to our given. So we get segment BC is congruent to segment CD. Given. Now, I'm kind of stuck. I only have an angle and a side. I need something else. Well, I use the fact I have vertical angles. So, I'm going to go angle BCA is congruent to angle DCE by the vertical angle theorem. Because what does the vertical angle theorem tell us? If two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. Now I have, look here, angle, side, angle. So I know the triangles are congruent. So I go triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC by angle, side, angle, congruence. Now that I know those two triangles are congruent, I can then state that angle A is congruent to angle E. Now, I'm going to tell you, there was a faster way of doing this one. If two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, the third angles are what? Congruent. You could have done it that way. All right. And why are these two congruent? Because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, let's do this last one together. 
It won't take as long, but we have to use the same idea. Notice, again, that CPCTC is after I prove triangles are congruent. So let's do the next one. We have our two columns. We have our statement side, our reason side. Let's make sure we mark our givens. We always start with one and we end with our proof. So segment FJ is congruent to segment GH. Here they are, congruent. Given. We're going to go to the next one. We're going to say angle JFH is congruent to angle GHF. That's given. Here they're marked. So I have a side and an angle. What do we need? Another pair of sides, right? Well, there you go. Segment FH. Now I'm going to say it's congruent to segment HF. I'm going to do the matchy matchy game when we do this, but that's still the reflexive property. Now, when I do that, notice what I have marked. Side, angle, side. And notice the key for me when proving triangles congruent is I mark my pairs of congruency, my sides and my angles. It lets me know what I have. So I can say triangle, let's just do this one, um, FGH is congruent to triangle. If I go FGH, I'm going to have to go JHF. And the reason for that would be side, angle, side, congruence. Now, because those two triangles are congruent, what do I know about segment FG and segment JH? They're congruent. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is the reason we'd be using for the very last step every single time on this lesson. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Make sure you say those words out loud. It will help you keep them memorized.